This week on Christian World News, a baptism service unlike any you have ever seen. These Iranians left Islam to follow Jesus Christ. Now they are helping spread the gospel inside the Islamic Republic. Plus, the church at the ground zero of the coronavirus. This pastor says Christians in Wuhan, China are serving their city as people are looking to God for help. And locusts devouring crops in East Africa. Where did the destructive horde come from and where is it headed next? Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. My colleague Wendy Griffith is on assignment. It is one of the most dangerous places for Christians, Iran. Yet inside this Muslim nation, they are seeing an unprecedented explosion of Christianity. A group of converts secretly left Iran to get baptized. I had the enormous privilege of being there and documenting their experience. On a recent Thursday afternoon, 20 Iranians took a flight from their country's main international airport in the capital city of Tehran and flew to an undisclosed city. The journey was filled with a lot of danger, but each one of them was willing to take the risk for the chance to experience a life-transforming moment. For security reasons, we have concealed their identities. We have changed their names and their voices. One by one, 20 Iranians descended the steps of this indoor swimming pool. Men, women, young adults, teenagers, and a seven-year-old girl. In the water waiting to baptize them, fellow Iranians Amir and Sasan, who had escaped persecution in their homeland. Most of the people at this gathering are artists, musicians, some are TV producers. They are very educated people. They are specialists from different fields of Iranian society. 27-year-old aspiring actor Reza among those getting submerged. I was waiting for this day for a long time. My heart was beating so fast with excitement. Reza had a difficult childhood. His uncle raped him when he was 13. The traumatic experience sent him down a path of raping and abusing numerous girls. I was a bad person, a very bad person. I tried to change for a few days, three, four, five days, but after that I was worse than before. A friend gave him a Bible and told him about finding healing and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. I was expecting to be in hell as punishment for all the things I had done. Instead, God forgave me. I was expecting fire, but God gave me living water and a new life. Reza told CBN News that today was an important part of his healing journey. I felt the presence and unconditional love of Christ that I was always thirsty for. 25-year-old Miriam was joined in the pool by her sister and brother. This is an amazing day for us. It's really nice that we are all together as siblings. All 20 Iranians were once Muslim. Many, like Leila, decided to follow Jesus Christ after watching Mohabbat TV, one of the most popular Christian satellite channels in Iran. I grew in my faith watching Mohabbat TV. I didn't know any other Christian person. I would call the TV hotline and phone counselors would pray for me. This is how I grew in my faith. Mike Ansari, an Iranian by birth, is director of operations at Mohabbat TV. 20 people who have um, joined us in their journey of faith from the beginning, watching Mohabbat TV and then growing and giving their heart to Christ and then coming here and saying, I would like to be baptized. I would like to be sent out. Give me more. It is an, an anointed moment that words cannot describe. Ansari says Christianity is growing fastest in his native land than in any other country of the world. More women are coming to Christ than men. As a result, women are now in key leadership positions within Iran's underground church movement. 40-year-old Azar is one of them. She used to follow the laws and tenets of Islam to a T. I was a very strong Muslim, a very devout follower from a young age. I prayed every day to Muhammad. I wore the full hijab. 
I didn't want any man to ever see my face. I never wanted to cause a man to sin by looking at my body. Still, Azar says 30 years of devotion to Islam left her restless. Like many women in Iranian society, she felt less valuable and on the edge of despair. I always questioned why Muhammad gave us a religion to follow that didn't allow us to be free and happy as women. There were so many restrictions on what we can and cannot do. Eleven years ago, she watched a movie on the life of Christ, and she was changed. I realized that I was following a lie, that Islam was a lie, and at times, I felt those 30 years I spent being Muslim were wasted, but Jesus said he would restore those lost years. Azar now runs a network of secret underground home fellowships. Because we don't have a church to gather in, we have to keep our groups small, not more than five or six people. We constantly change days, times, and locations to avoid getting caught. Azar watches Sasan regularly on Mohaba TV. When he's not busy baptizing fellow countrymen, Sasan is co-hosting a popular show on the channel showing Iranian Christians how to operate house churches and spread the gospel inside the Islamic country. It's one of the greatest resources we can offer the church inside Iran, a church that doesn't have any access to any educational institutions, any theological schools, any church buildings, established Christian institutions. Through these programs, we are mobilizing and resourcing the house church movement in Iran. Mohabat also has a virtual church platform, giving undercover Christians the opportunity to connect with others scattered around the country in a safe and secure environment. We're realizing that a lot of isolated believers in Iran, they do not have any chance to have fellowship with anybody else. So we're using the virtual church as a bridge. Shema is a Mohaba TV phone counselor. She says many recent callers to the channel expressed anger with Iran's government leaders. People blame the regime for all their problems because they know the country is wealthy. We have oil and other riches. But the government doesn't care about people suffering, and they are fed up. The Iranians shared with me just how devastating the sanctions have been for their lives. More than a year after the Trump administration levied crippling sanctions on the Islamic Republic, today the nation is in deep recession, there's high inflation, and the country has lost most of its value in its currency. <laughs> After a few days of Bible training, worship, and prayer, the 20 Christians headed back home to Iran, carrying with them Bibles, Christian literature, and hundreds of micro SD cards containing evangelistic material used to share hope and the love of Jesus Christ during these uncertain times. They knew it was a risky mission, but worth it. Hopefully, when you see these images of people getting baptized and hear their testimonies, you are drawn to pray for Iran and the whole Islamic world because they are lost and need Jesus. And they are. Please continue to pray for the Christians in Iran. Up next, how Christians in Wuhan, China, are risking their lives to serve others in the midst of the deadly corona coronavirus outbreak. And in Africa, the hungry horde of locusts that's devouring entire cities and putting tens of millions of people at risk. Founded one of the world's largest television ministries. Welcome folks to the 700 Club. Formed a global relief organization demonstrating God's love in action. Thank you for helping us. Established a leading university. Graduates, flip your tassel and became a New York Times best-selling author. Now, Pat Robertson wants to share with you significant insights learned from a lifetime in the Word of God. In his latest book, 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance, you'll discover the laws that govern success and how they can work for you. A real-world guidebook that can revolutionize your life. Call now, 1-800-700-7000, or go to cbn.com to receive Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. 
the fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 930 as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 9.30 on the CBN News Channel. And welcome back to Christian World News. Churches in Wuhan, China are serving their communities in the midst of the coronavirus crisis. In an interview posted uh, to the web by Pennsylvania-based Ambassadors for Christ, Pastor Huang Li of Root and Fruit Church says they are willing to face the dangers to show the sacrificial love of Christ by helping others. I still go out to help others every day. I wear my protective items. There's dozens of people in my church doing the same. Me as a pastor, I go out to help others. With another pastor, uh, our wives, we're doing that every day. And we hope to encourage the brothers and sisters to do the same, to show our community by doing it ourselves that when others are in such desperate circumstance, we Christians should come forward. While the outbreak has put everyone in a life and death situation, it's also helped many realize that their true hope is not found in this world. So at this point, they're thinking more and more about the relationship between God who gives us life, the meaning, and the eternity. During this process, many of them have told our pastors their, their life has been greatly touched and transformed. Uh, because public meetings are forbidden in Wuhan, churches there are meeting for prayer and worship on the Internet. Early this month, churches in China and other countries held three days of prayer and fasting online. Turning to Africa, it's been two years since one of the most violent terrorist groups in the world kidnapped then 14-year-old Nigerian Christian Leah Sharibu. Boko Haram abducted Leah along with 109 of her female classmates in the following days. Five girls died in captivity. The group released the rest about a month later, but Leah remains captive because she refused to renounce her Christian faith. On our CBN Newswatch program, D.D. Lawson of the group Save the Persecuted Christians related a disturbing new development. Leah apparently has been forcibly married to a Boko Haram commander uh, that she likely was forcibly converted. That doesn't mean that in her heart she has given up the faith, but she very well may have been abused and even brainwashed at this point. The captivity that she is enduring now is, is extreme, and what Leia faces every single day is something that is only we can dream of in our nightmares. Uh, Lawson uh, also said that Leah reportedly gave birth to a son by that marriage. One of the world's most destructive uh, and oldest uh, insects is wreaking havoc in Africa. Hundreds of millions of locusts are eating their way across the continent. It's almost like a page out of Exodus, the worst outbreak in decades as billions of desert locusts swarm across a large part of Africa. Today, locust swarms are as big as major cities, and this is getting worse by the day. Today, the countries of Sudan, Eritrea, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya are facing what experts say is the worst locust infestation in nearly 70 years. Experts say the average swarm can contain up to 150 million locusts, travel 100 miles in a single day, and grow as large as 250 football fields. That swarm in one day can eat the same amount of food as the entire population of Kenya. That swarm in one day can eat the same amount of food as everybody here in the tri-state area, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. 
Desperate farmers in rural eastern Kenya are using blankets and other clothing or beating on pots and pans to chase away the hungry pests. But it's doing very little to stop them from devouring crops. And now the UN is warning the fast-breeding insects could grow 500 times between now and June. Pretty incredible. The uh, locust swarms are uh, on the move. There are reports they have moved into the Middle East, Asia, and even as far as China. A new film tells the story of an American missionary family serving in some of the most dangerous places in the world. Free Burma Rangers follows Dave Eubank, a former Special Forces soldier, his wife and three children, to battlefields in Burma, Iraq, Syria and Sudan, where they have rescued trapped uh, children under ISIS fire, fed refugees in Syria and rebuilt churches destroyed by Islamic terrorists. Eubank shared with CBN News his secret to serving God with all your heart. Don't live in the swamp of sins, you're right. Don't live in the swamp of do good or Christian things you think you ought to do, but God didn't ask you to do. Stay on that straight and fast highway where God says, this is what you're made to do. Go for it. There's no caution sign. There's no be careful. There's no be safe. Fathom Events is screening the film in select theaters on February 24th and 25th. And to find out where you can see the movie, you can visit our website, cbnnews.com. More than one million men in Indonesia have been discipled in the Christian faith over the past 20 years through a curriculum taught in churches, small groups and retreats. The Christian Men's Network, founded by Dr. Edwin, Cole, uh, Edwin Luis Cole, celebrated 20 years of ministry in Indonesia on February 20th. The ministry is a global movement of pastors and leaders dedicated to helping families and changing the hearts of men. Its curriculum, called Maximized Manhood, teaches men to take responsibility for their homes and their nation and to live by biblical principles. Coming up, a revival of repentance, tens of thousands of people giving their hearts to Christ. How this move of God in Tennessee started with a very simple commitment. That story in a moment. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Improve personal finances, maintain a lasting marriage, and achieve success in all you do. With Pat Robertson's dynamic new book, 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance. These supernatural laws of the universe will help you to overcome life's challenges and to accomplish your goals. Transform yourself and revolutionize your life now with Pat Robertson's 10 Laws for Success. Call now or visit CBN.com. Welcome back to Christian World News. Here in the United States, revival is taking place in the state of Tennessee as 1,000 churches from various denominations are partnering for 30 days of prayer and fasting. It is called Awaken Tennessee, 
And pastors report the response, well, it has been powerful as God's Spirit leads people to salvation, rededications, and baptism. It's estimated that more than 100,000 people will be touched by the time it all ends on February 23rd. In East Rogersville, Baptist Church has been the launching pad. The church pastor told the Rogersville Review newspaper that this past Sunday, quote, the Holy Spirit came and took control. Joining us now to describe how God is moving at these services is Bobby Franklin of Awaken Tennessee. Bobby, great to have you on the show. So tell us, uh, how is God changing people's lives in these services? Well, God is moving tremendously right here at East Rogersville Baptist and really all across Rogersville, Tennessee. A lot of churches have been involved in these services. Um, basically, it began with, I, I believe, uh, a fasting movement. Uh, we saw in Nashville, Tennessee last year, um, a, a leader, a young, humble pastor start a, a 30 day fast and 400 churches joined him and we took packets across the state they are prayer packets that help people to to pray for the residents of their city and neighbors and and basically this year more churches wanted to participate so there are literally well over a thousand churches now participating this year in this 30-day fast and because of what we have seen um, in other nations, uh, we particularly saw in the nation of Egypt back in 2010 and 11 that um, really stirred up revival there and spread across their nation and, and now across the Middle East with millions of Muslims getting saved. You, you mentioned uh, this before, but it all started, as you said, with this commitment uh, to praying for 30 days. Tell us about that real quickly. 400 churches ended up participating and a bunch of leaders that we um, introduced to this movement across Tennessee uh, participated last year. And then this year, what we saw was that all the churches that had already heard about it really wanted to join and participate as well this year. And so we have well over a thousand churches that are fasting and praying right now uh, across Tennessee. And about a week into this fast, a few weeks ago, we had been invited to this church and they had revival meetings uh, scheduled already. And as soon as the service began and the worship began, it was such a beautiful experience to see people running to the altar with no invitation. And that's a sign of revival. Do you think this could uh, help lead to nationwide revival in America? I absolutely believe it could if the people of God will press into him in prayer. It always takes pressing into God and pursuing him. And it absolutely could inspire a, a, another great awakening. Terrific. Thank you so much. There is nothing like the power and the glory of a transformed uh, life in Jesus Christ. Bobby Franklin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You can learn more about this ongoing revival at our website. Uh, just visit cbnnews.com. We'll be back right after this. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating fight. Jenna Browder, Goes his words carefully. Ben Kennedy, Plan to join him. And Amber Strong. For impeachment grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living, Tuesday night at 930. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I want to tell you about a phenomenal book that I just read, 10 Laws for Success by Pat Robertson. See, I firmly believe it can transform your life and the, the lives of those that you care about. 
In this book, Pat shares the supernatural secrets he's discovered and shows you the way to a rich and fulfilling life. In the book, 10 Laws for Success, Pat shares biblical life principles that can put you on a path to purpose, fulfillment, and achievement. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your own copy today. 10 Laws for Success. This dynamic book is a must read for anyone who wants to achieve their goals, build a solid financial foundation, and grow in their relationship with God. I highly recommend that you get your own copy of Pat Robertson's latest book, 10 Laws for Success. God bless you. The coronavirus has health officials across the globe scrambling to contain the disease. Our Emily Jones introduces us to some Israelis who are turning to God for divine intervention. Take a look. Welcome to Jerusalem for this Inside Israel report, where we tell you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. The coronavirus continues to wreak havoc on China as the death toll grows every day. Many here in Israel are choosing prayer and heading to the Western Wall to ask God for a miracle. Israelis recently gathered at the holy site to utter prayers in Hebrew and Mandarin, asking God to eradicate the deadly virus from the earth. We can't uh, develop medicines because we're not, we're not doctors and we're not medics and we, we just don't know what to do. But what we do know how to do well is pray. We're praying for uh, the, the people in China, we're praying, praying for all people around the world in order to keep them safe, in order to keep them secure, in order to, to enable the doctors to find the cure very fast for this terrible uh, uh, coronavirus. Several Chinese tourists joined the Israelis in praying for China. Israel hopes these prayers from Jerusalem will be felt around the world. The Sea of Galilee is where Jesus walked on water, but unfortunately it's been shrinking due to years of drought. But thanks to this winter's heavy rainfall, that might be changing. Since the beginning of the winter, the Sea of Galilee, or Kinneret as it's called in the Old Testament, has risen over one meter. Video online shows some parts of Galilee bursting at the seams. While many are celebrating this rise, the Galilee is still far from full and can't keep up with Israel's growing demand for water. In Israel, the consumption of water is much higher than the quantity of rainfall that we get, not only in the Sea of Galilee, but also in other water sources. Therefore, we are in a deficit every year more and more. The Sea of Galilee is about one meter away from being full, and many are praying for more rain. Israeli archaeologists have uncovered a temple in an ancient Canaanite city straight from the pages of the Bible. Joshua 10.32 says, God delivered the city of Lachish into the hand of Israel when the Israelites were on their way to the Promised Land. On your screen right now are ruins of a temple found in that biblical city. Archaeologists from Hebrew University found pottery, daggers, jewelry, and stones that may have once served as representations of temple gods. This is a peek into the life of the people who lived in Israel before it became a nation. That's it for Inside Israel this week. We'll see you next time. Fascinating. Incredible discovery still every day being found in that beautiful country. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us this week. Until next week, from all of us here at the Christian World News Studios and the headquarters of the Christian Broadcasting Network, we wish you a fantastic week ahead. As always, goodbye and God bless you.